I greet you all in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somehow, I've been kind of dreaming of this moment. And in my dream for this moment, my, there was a strong, strong desire in my heart to do something that I've done before that has meant so much to me in my life journey. And at the General Synod, when Bishop John asked me to come to Ottawa to be the keynote speaker for the, for the diocese, a little over a year ago, when I met him, I believe it may have been in Toronto, at the Council of General Synod, where I was at one time, I asked myself, why did John ask me to do this, to come and be the speaker here? I said, why me, knowing that I have only been a deacon for one year, maybe less than that, and ordained maybe a year and a half as a priest. And as I look at the website of who had been the previous keynote speakers, I said to myself, why me? But in that, in that contemplation, there has always been that memory that's been etched in my heart on that wonderful visit to St. Matthew's a number of years ago. It seems that it's a long time ago, but yet so etched into my heart. And I want to tell you a little bit about my journey. I had mentioned to you that when I, was, when I spoke the two times at General Synod, I, I spoke about my journey. My, my walk in my own personal life and a, and a journey of our people. But I want to talk specifically about my journey. When I came here a number of years ago, Nirmal Mendes and I, who was our priest at the time, and Larry Armstrong, and the High Ridge Singers, I reflect on that. And as I reflect on that, I said to myself, Norm, it has to be a watershed moment for you, a defining moment. And we've had defining moments in our lives, haven't we? Things that kind of just happen in our lives that we say that because of that event, you are a changed person. Because of what you've experienced, you will never forget. Because of that experience, you can walk with much more confidence in your journey in life. There was probably a meeting that took place, much in the same manner as the meeting that will take place on October the 30th here, in your strategic planning session called Widening the Lens. There was a widening of the lens a number of years ago here at St. Matthews, a widening of the lens to look north, to see how they can partnership with a First Nation community. And I'm so glad that God led you to that strategic planning session and had led you to confer with our Bishop Mark McDonald, the National Indigenous Bishop. And I'm so glad that God had spoken through all of you to look north and to say St. Thomas in Moose Factory. Those will be your partners. Amazing things happened in the course of that. Before we came down, we had a visit of a number of people that I had dinner with last night. But it was like, it was like having a family dinner last night. It was awesome. These people who came to visit, these people who came to my camp, these people who we took out into the frozen ice of James Bay and experienced the night sky. These people who went on a skidoo ride some 
10 miles into the bush to experience the dance hall of the Partridge and took this wonderful ride up Partridge Creek, Aguasagua, and to look at the beauty and wonder of God's creation, the land that he had given us as, a, as Cree people, to share that with them. Wonderful, wonderful memories. I have been brought up in the Christian faith, in the Anakin tradition. My mother was a devout Anglican, spoke only Cree, read only Cree, sang only Cree, and her heart was pure Cree. She raised us that way. But somehow inside of my Anglican upbringing, I knew that there was something that was disturbing a push-pull thing that said, who are you, Norm? Who are you really? Your name is Norm Wesley. I don't think Wesley is an Indian name. Those kind of questions rang into my heart and I said, who are you? And I shared at Synod my journey and I call it in search of Cree reality, my Creeness. And I sat many times with the elders, and the elders told stories where time and space came to a standstill, and I soaked it all in. They telling me who I am as a Cree person. I did that for quite a number of years over time. And my desire had always been to know myself as a Cree person and to be able to worship in a way where I can take my Creeness and the teachings of our people in the Anglican tradition and make them one. And make them one. That's been my dream our visit here to St. Matthew's a number of years ago was a defining moment for me, a watershed moment. After the wonderful visit of members of the parish downstairs and the wonderful reception that we've had and the, and the kindness and generosity of you all, we, we worshiped here Sunday morning. And I sat over there in tears. I cried. Tears came down my eyes. Not many, because I tried holding them back as best I could. But certainly there was a large lump in my throat. And I said, this is a taste of what I want, I long for. It was, that, it, it was part of that prayer that we say after, before we take communion. You, in the, 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 the prayer, taste and see that the Lord is good. It was that moment, taste and see that the Lord is good. I could see myself as a devout believer in Christ and God and that taste of who I am as an indigenous person from this country, as a Cree person. Here at St. Matthew's, a def my defining moment. And I thank God that he has led St. Matthew's and directed St. Matthew's in that strategic meeting to that moment in my life. My life has changed. My life was changed. I was a lay reader for many, many years perhaps a better part of 30 years when I was here last. Since, I've, since that moment, I have went to Pinawa, Manitoba, to the sacred circle of the, of the Anglican Indigenous Ministries, and was there that I saw some 300 of my people gather at Pinawa, Manitoba, at the sacred circle where we worship God, where we spoke 
God's word, but at the same time took who we were as Aboriginal people and brought them together, weaved them together in worship, in breaking bread, in song, prayer. And I looked at those people who were ordained ministers, deacons, priests, yes, bishops, our own. And God called me and he said, what about you, Norm? What about you? Are you going to remain a great leader for the rest of your life? And it was then that God called me. He said, step forward, Norm. Come, be my servant. We flew back from Kinawak, Manitoba, from Winnipeg, landed in Toronto, waited for the arrival of my dear grandchild, our first grandchild from our youngest son. And we're going down the QEW and riding along and that moment came. It was like proposing to my wife. She was sitting beside me, her and I. I said to her, Jean, I'm going to put my name into the ministry. It was like proposing to my wife. And she said to me, I was wondering when you would ask and, and, and do that. Well, I almost lost control of my vehicle <laughs> at that point because it was an affirmation say, I knew you were going to do it, and I was waiting for that moment. And the rest, I think, is history. So here I stand. I've come full circle, it seems, in that chapter of my journey in life, my faith journey. I stood here, invited by you people, God's people, you people who God has spoken through to say, let's look north in your strategic plan and see what we could do. And God spoke to you. And I wanted to share that with you because God does wonderful, wonderful things and sometimes we need to be reminded. And I think we need to re be reminded by people outside who can see perhaps from a different perspective through different lenses. So I wanted to share that story with you and say that you, the people of St. Matthew's, have made an incredible difference in my life in my faith journey. I want to thank you for that. We seems we, we, we've come full, I've come full circle in this. And I, and I humbly, humbly, with the humblest of, the, the one of the things that I've learned in my people is the, is the, is that of humility. Humility, our people are very humble people. One of the prayers that we prayed this morning was what we call the prayer of humility, humble access before communion. We do not, we do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. We pray that all the time. I pray that all the time with my elders. And I can see the humility in their voices, and I can feel the humility in their hearts. And it's that same humility that I return here to St. Matthew's and to say with my heart of hearts, thank you, God. Thank you, Christ, for working through the people of St. Matthew's in helping me in my journey and what I need to do in bringing your church and melting it and molding it so that we as First Nation peoples can experience the awesome of the awesomeness, if you will, of what can be when we processed that Sunday. Some of you who were here will recall the sound of high ridge drumming and we processing in. The sound of the drum in this place is just 
to me, it's, it, it's transforming. And that was the experience that I had. And that was what brought me to tears. Brought me to tears. And I wanted to share that with you. Last night, when I got back to my room, I said to myself, now I have to prepare to speak at St. Matthew's tomorrow morning. So I started reading the three readings again, and I started crafting the sermon. And I put, put it together, got up this morning, finished it off, and I went downstairs to print it and folded it up and put it in my paper, my, my book, and then Gregor picked me up. And I said to myself, no, I'm going to speak from the heart. I'm going to speak from the heart. Because these people need to know not what I had written down, but what God has done through them, to me. So that's my journey. And it continues. It continues with assuredness and confidence that God works through you, works through me. It's been three years since my ordination. And I made my testimony to my little family last night at dinner. I said to them, in the last three years, I can tell you this one thing. I can tell you two things. One, that God has never, ever failed me in my ministry. Never failed me in the three years. And I said to myself, if that being the case, then what a wonderful, wonderful future lies before me and my family when we put our trust in God. The other thing is that the only time that I have failed was when I failed to put my trust in God, that he would be beside me. And how many times have I said in the course of my ministry, when the phone rings in the middle of the night, wakened, when they say, Norm, we need to speak to you, and my heart races, and fear strikes my heart, I say to myself, filled with fear, I don't say to myself, I say this out loud. I said, then, if, you're, if I'm being called to do this, then at least come with me and be by my side. Never, ever fails. And you have helped immensely, you people of the parish of St. Matthew's, my journey and my faith. I would not have been able to speak the way I spoke at, at, at your synod in the last couple days had it not been for this experience, I'm sure. I'm sure. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I pray for you. I am Mahatta, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for returning me to your people my brothers and sisters in Christ here at St. Matthew's. A blessed and holy place, Lord, where you have spoken through your people. Where you have spoken through your people, Lord, to raise and uplift those, Lord, they have been called to serve through your name. We pray in Jesus Christ. Amen.